think is is a, a lesser situation. Um, but yeah, it's been a short order build. I'm looking forward to it because it couldn't, to me, it couldn't headline Mania. But I like the idea. I really like the idea that Batista asked for this match. He forced this match because he wants to prove that he's better than Cena and he should be on all the magazines and get all the the movies that Cena does. I like that. I think it's a real kind of story of jealousy and career aspiration. And I like that. I, I do. Even though the two guys facing each other feels like we've seen it a million times before. Um, and that brings us on to the main event now. A couple of guys we have seen wrestle a couple of times before, but that's only made this uh, this feel more important, not less, because they're so great. Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. No disqualification, no count out. Shawn Michaels' career versus The Undertaker's 17-0 and 0 streak. Yeah, I mean, this is the match, and who would have thought that 10 years ago people would be uh, looking forward to a wrestling meeting if you me to as the main event. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, again, it goes back to that match last year. I mean, it was so good. Nobody expected it to be as good as it was. And, and since then, you know, if, if it was hinted, if it was ever hinted in the last year, and it was a few times, uh, that they were going to wrestle again, it would have to be the main event. And now with a career on the line, the music videos, which have been phenomenal, um, you know, some of the promos have just been, I, I think, anyway. I mean, this is the difference between um, Edge and Jericho and Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. The chemistry, um, with, when they're just, you know, it, it's like that's The Undertaker and that's Shawn Michaels and it's like an emotional attachment, which um, I, I feel hasn't been there with a, a, a lot of the, the, the newer guys. When, when I say newer guys, <laughs> I'm talking about like the likes of John Cena, which have been around forever, which who I at least feel, you know, people care about one way or another, but Shawn Michaels and Undertaker are, are like last of the household names in a lot of ways. And uh, and I, I can't, th- I mean, this is going to be blow away. I mean, this is like, again, it goes back to like even 20 years ago, um, you know, for, for a lot of fans, it was like Hogan and, and the Warrior, who was the new guy at the time. Yeah. Um, but, but even that, you know, pales in comparison, I feel, to, uh, to what The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels mean now. Absolutely. I, I feel exactly the same way. Uh, I agree with everything you said. And I think as well that the last couple of years, the, the problem's been is the lack of believable storylines. You know, talk about Hogan and Savage's storyline going to WrestleMania. This storyline here, kind of like Cena and Batista, but that's much lesser and much more, more transitional. This storyline that Sean, you know, he lost to Taker and he can't handle it. And so much so that he went, he was so driven that he put his career on the line. And you believe that he's so driven that he did it. Uh, I think there's real human emotion. I work, think it works on many different levels. I think people know these guys come to the end of their careers, but it also makes sense from a storyline standpoint, and it's real substance, and it's also going to be a great match. So it's got every element you could possibly want, and like you, Stevie, I hope it finishes the show. So, Stevie, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. For uh, I'm going to see if I can get Darren on the line to get his predictions for the show. And uh, oh, what's the best website to hit you up for uh, uh, your wrestling work in England? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if there's one I could pick out, possibly, but, you know, ch- check out the FWA stuff, fwauk.com, or t- check out my home promotion, you know, 3cw.co.uk, and I'm on MySpace, I don't do Facebook, unfortunately, but if you just look for Sweet Stevie Aaron, and, uh, you know, send me a message, I'll definitely get in touch, because I'm love talking about wrestling. <laughs> you know, brother. well, thanks, Stevie, it's been an absolute pleasure, it's great to talk to you again, enjoy WrestleMania, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Thanks, Blake. Okay, folks, and we are back here with Darren Holmes, results editor right here at WrestlingDungeon.com. Darren, WrestleMania is coming up. It's just a couple of days away now. How are you feeling about it? I'm excited about it, Blake. Thanks for having me. Um, it's shaping up to be quite a good card, actually. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I have to say, you know, I, you know, I was saying this earlier. I'm just, I'm looking forward to this show more than any show I can remember in a long time. I actually said that about TLC in December just because it was so interesting the booking of having like Sheamus in the main event and, and, and Drew McIntyre coming up the card and Kofi on the card but I mean in terms of a Wrestlemania or a big show feel there hasn't been a Wrestlemania that feels this important in a long 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 time I can't actually pinpoint it, to be perfectly honest with you so I'm really psyched for this show too and, and we got a big party coming up this weekend you're going to be you got a rugby game this Saturday don't you? Yeah a rugby game down in Shannon and Limerick so I'll be down to you guys in Cork shortly after 
and maybe we can watch a bit of the UFC on a Saturday night and of course the main event WrestleMania then on Sunday night so it should be a fabulous weekend yeah yeah of course I, I keep forgetting about UFC and that's going to be crazy because I mean over yeah. here in this part of the world UFC is going to be at like 4 o'clock in the morning so uh, we, we might tape it or whatever but I mean Sunday we're having a big party so it's just going to be an insane weekend it's going to be so much fun and I keep overlooking UFC because you know it's funny Darren um, they've had this debate in, in you know recent years about how UFC is taking Taking the lead over WWE, how they're growing and WWE is declining slightly because UFC is real. And I've always argued that that's not the case because, I mean, you know, they've had fake stuff like movies going back 100 years and theater going back thousands of years. And they've had real fights going back thousands of years. And, and it's just about whether you promote it well. And this weekend, I keep forgetting about UFC because they haven't promoted that show nearly as well as I expected. Even though they got Frank Mir, they got the interim championship on the line, they got George St. Pierre, and we got WrestleMania. And uh, Darren, for my money, they've done a great job building up this show. Oh yeah, I'm, I think that this WrestleMania has been built up. I mean, they talk about the top four every year with Survivor Series, SummerSlam, or Roman WrestleMania. I think they dropped the ball on the other three big time. Yeah. Um, but this WrestleMania, they've just really pulled their socks up and pulled out some great, great build up. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not sure if in the future it's necessarily going to hold because, I mean, there, there have been some booking flaws along the line and it's not every year that you can do, you know, retirement versus the streak. That's, you know, something that takes a, you know, they're basically blowing off a 25-year career and, you know, 17 WrestleMania matches. You can't do that every year. And Bret Hart won't be coming back for the first time in 12 years to fight Mr. Man every year. So, I mean, there's a couple of things that they kind of, I don't want to say locked into, but it's not through great design. But, but you know, for whatever reasons, they've done their part well enough and they got some real interesting matches. And it's going to be a real fun show. So let's jump into the card here. And the first match I have listed, uh, we're going to get your picks here, and uh, we'll do uh, maybe a, a little, little bit of betting this weekend. Maybe some, <laughs> maybe some alcohol shots of, of alcohol bet or something. Uh, I, I, Adam Joyce had to give me a, a bottle of rum for uh, a prediction on Legacy versus DX last year at Breaking Point. So uh, the first match we got here, Darren, is uh, first time it's 10 men, money in the bank. Ooh, I'm... This is actually one of the matches I'm least excited for because there's 10 men. I mm. mean, if you're there live, I'm sure it'd be great, but... The camera can only stick on so many people, you know? Yeah. And I thought when, it was six men at the start, wasn't it, when they first started it off? That's right. It was originally six guys. The first year they had uh, Edge, Benoit, Jericho, Kane, Shelton Benjamin, and I'm forgetting somebody. This was WrestleMania in Hollywood in 2005. And then a couple of years later they went to eight, which I thought was overkill. And now they got ten this year. And, and this might also be the last one because they've added a Money in the Bank pay-per-view to their schedule for later in the year. So this might be the last time we see this particular match at WrestleMania as well. And I know what you mean. Ten men, that's a lot of guys in there. Yeah, it's a lot of guys to watch, you know. You yeah. don't know where to be, what to be watching or what to be doing. The, the production team are going to have a tough task anyway, and I'm glad that this match is not on TNA. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a, I mean, it'll be all right because they're smart enough. I mean, it's the same way you book a triple threat match, but, but exponentially bigger in the sense that they will lay out the match very carefully so there's only one main thing to follow at a time, apart from the, the start, which will probably be a schmoz. So, but the thing is, is that, I mean, the first year, if you go back to the first year, we had six guys. You kind of had six individual identities who you all believed, believed all of them had the potential uh, to win uh, the belt. It might have been Christian was the sixth guy actually that year, uh, who had the potential to win the match. You know, Benoit had great credentials. Uh, Chris Jericho had great credentials. They were both former world champions. Uh, Edge was coming up. Kane was a former world champion. Whereas this year, it's ten guys, and they've spent no time on the guys individually. So I think it's impossible to care about the individuals. It really is just a stunt match, isn't it? Well, it is, but they have concentrated on Drew McIntyre quite a lot. Yes, they it, have, it. haven't they? Yeah, they've given him like they've made it a bit too obvious, you know. Yeah. I mean, will Evan Bourne ever win this match? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would have to imagine that would be the biggest uh, 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 blown spot in the history of man. <laughs> but the thing about the money in the bank is like it, it normally opens a show, doesn't it? Yeah. And we're always down in Cork, and it's always so it's such an exciting start because there's huge spots, and I actually remember John Morrison moonsault him in the ladder. Yeah, that was ridiculous. We all just went crazy, you know. It's very good, you know, real good excitement to start the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I hated that spot. I thought it was crazy, but it's very exciting, which is going to be good fun. And yeah. uh, you know, we did. That was the same year that was WrestleMania 24 from Orlando two years ago that CM Punk won. And I know that he was not my pick, and that shocked me. So, you know, there's always room for an upset. But I think we yeah. both, uh, and I think everybody in the world has the same pick, and that pick would be Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. Or I'm actually going to do a sports slash here and put Christian in as well. 
Wow. I would be I would be very, very surprised, especially the way he was so marginalized on Raw, where all he got was yeah. a one-liner with Pete Rose. But I'll tell you what, man, I mean, if he won it, I mean, talk about a guy who's wor- 